she didn't. Wait, there ain't no way that the good guys are the white guys and then they play against the scary black guys who are also now... Can't have a Daily Wire production without it being white supremacist, dog. Yo. But um, I wanted to talk about this especially. Hollywood won't make a movie about how laughably absurd it is. Absurd it is that we now allow grown men to call themselves women and dominate women's Ooh. sports. So we did. First of all, that's not. What do you mean Hollywood won't make a movie about that? Like, Juana Man literally exists. What are we talking about? It's just, it wasn't, like, inherently transphobic. You know what I mean? Like, it was done not to be like, oh, this is what... Like, it was... Or was it Juana Man or was it White Chicks? What was it? There's a couple. Wasn't it Juana Man? Am I wrong? What was that? The only way he can stay pro is play like a girl. Oh, yeah, that, that is true. Okay, what? Juana Man, uh, White Chicks. Like, there's a couple. There's a bunch. They did the reverse and She's the Man. Yeah, no way they said there's not enough transphobia who hold my beer. No, the thing is, like, half of, like, cross-dressing, like, gender swapping and stuff is such a certified classic of, like, the 90s. Pretty much every single f comedy has done this, okay, to some capacity. So the idea that, like, this doesn't exist or whatever is so ridiculous uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not even going to go into like Shakespeare and like old school plays or even Milan or like all these other instances where like, but it's a trope. It's like a very, it's a classic trope. Tyler Perry, Eddie Murphy, all these guys have done it. And then also on top of that, you have on top of that, you literally have, you know, movies, entire movies dedicated to like men competing against women, like cis men cross-dressing and competing against women except i would go so far as to say a lot of those movies even like joanna man or or um or white chicks i'm sure they had like a lot of inappropriate jokes in them that would be seen as transphobic now but i wouldn't even say like the origins of said movies were the origins of said movies were like inherently trying to shit on trans people you know what i mean it was more like it was more sexist, I think, than than uh, transphobic, like in the sense that they they most likely I I don't really remember. I'm not defending these movies at all, but they most likely were were doing this thing where they were like, "Oh, men are better than women at sports." Like that's kind of it. This, on the other hand, is like directly, I suspect, transphobic, right? Like this is specifically done. It's like Mrs. Doubtfire, but evil, right? Like, it's not about, like, cross-dressing or anything like that and haha, -ha, like, men are actually better than women in sports or anything like that. It's just straight up, like, like trans people are, are secretly uh, faking it or something. Where women's sports is being transformed. The Wait, there ain't no fucking way they put... In a world... Wait, hold on. Where women's is that... At this point, I feel like the entire like trans panic is just propped up to fucking give Riley Gaines a career. Like it makes no sense. It makes no fucking sense that people are this aggro about this shit still. It's like, bro, it failed politically. Please stop. It's so odd that this person's claim to fame. Can we talk about something? Can we talk about now? Are we, are we far enough removed from the situation that we can fucking laugh at a person who got like tied for fifth place and lost to, four cis women okay and then one trans woman and never stopped complaining about it it's like bitch you weren't in second place and lost to a trans woman like you literally lost to multiple cis women get better at swimming bozo skill issue and conservatives still fucking constantly put this psychopath all over their broadcast, they, God, they love a fucking loser who won't stop yapping, dude. It's fucking crazazy. You know, Riley Gaines made a video crediting the Dunning-Kruger Dunning -Kruger Times for her information. Everybody heard last night that uh, the Irish basically played a game of fuck around and find out. Wait, what? This is not Riley Gaines. Is being transformed. Anyway, the Daily Wire. 
calls foul with the most triggering comedy of the year. Oh, dude. Our comedy is so triggering, dog. Oh, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to perish if I watch this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm going to get triggered. Uh-oh. Guys, this is serious. Sports can be your pathway to a better life. Well, like yours? Ew, Jeremy Boring is in this? Oh, no. they're Dude, they're all playing dress up. Nah, 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 I know what this is. Come on, man. A lot of theater kids. A lot of theater kids. They're just using this as an opportunity. They're just like, yeah, we'll do theater kid stuff, but like we're doing it in a in a homophobic way. So like don't don't say we're gay. Please don't steal my catalytic converter again. Winning matters. It's the key ingredient in becoming a winner. Then maybe you should try it sometime. Are you gonna move? I am not. Dude, they have too much money. Like, I can't believe they're they're pumping out, like, rom-coms for eight people to watch. Okay? It's nuts that they have, like, this level of, of uh, production capabilities at this point. Let's cut to the chase. I know you're not a woman. Hey, you don't know how he identifies. If you can beat them. What do you know about the U.S. Opens for the Global Games? You want us to compete as women. $5,000 prizes. My lover says you were a great coach back in the day. Join. This is the way the world is now. My eight-year-old daughter told me all about it. So a guy can become a girl with no physical... I can't lie. I want to watch this now. I, like, I hate these pieces of shit, but I kind of want to watch them try and act. I feel like this is literally made for us. Like, this is the audience. It's made for, like, people who call up children's hospitals and, and issue bomb threats. And us. Like, as far as the, the target audience, like, there's no way. This is made for hate watchers, I think. I have to watch this. I, I'm excited. I'm not going to even lie. I'm excited to watch this. Physical changes at all. Oh, that's called gender fluid. So I can be a woman on the court and a man in the bedroom. I can't believe it. Nice. You mean when you're sleeping? Yes. Coach. Alex. We, we could play, play basketball. basketball. We'd have to get the whole team back together. It's time. We're in. I'm in. I'm in. To play. Lady Baldur's. Man up. Like a girl. That's why I'm with her. Oh. I'm leaving my truth. This is my truth. Dude, I love that they're all like pasty ass old white guys, by the way. Like, that's... It's classic. They're just like, oh, dude, we dominate women, bro. We would dominate women. <laughs> Brittany Griner would destroy you, okay? Straight up. Bro, heroes. Day one of being a girl athlete. <laughs> I love being a girl. Two sheroes. We could dominate every woman's sport. Running, swimming, soccer. I said sport, Felix. It's ladies basketball, boys. Nobody watches. It is pretty funny that this is like. They're literally just dunking off these women. No, yeah. This ultimately, dude, dude. This ultimately comes down to not being transphobic and just shitting on women, which is exactly what Joanna Man and white chicks were. Like, that's the, that's the funniest part about the story is that this is no longer, this is no longer like, transphobia because you're so hyper focused on making like a movie out of it transphobia only works transphobia only works when you are uh saying it like this is what trans people are doing okay this is what trans people are doing that's the transphobic side of it okay like they're faking it they're faking it so they can like win a swim meet at the age of 12 right like that's crazy that's a stupid fucking thing to say now now Beyond that, this turns, if you make a whole movie out of it, like, it basically just turns into just shitting on cis women. Yeah, this is just a throwaway late 90s bro film. Exactly. I mean, it's pretty awesome. My favorite part in the real world is none of these dudes are athletic enough to beat any women anyways. Yeah, no, literally. That's why it's so funny. Like, those guys, if they played against, like, actual WNBA uh, athletes, like, they would get fucking destroyed. Because <laughs> they're so incredibly out of shape. 
Excuse me. Like, I'm no athlete by any means. I cook most of those motherfuckers, you know what I mean? Pro probably all of them. Are these seats open? <laughs> ne never mind. Getting dumped. Like, this is so perfect because, like, by virtue of being a man, you can just dunk like that. You know what I mean? It's so perfect. I love this. I love this. Like, this dude can't even palm the ball, brother. But by virtue of being a man in this fantasy, like, he automatically outcompetes every woman. You know what I mean? It's so sick. It's awesome. Oh, God, I can't wait to watch this. I'm so, I'm stoked. You guys should have never shown this to me. This is, like, right in my fucking wheelhouse, dude. God damn it, this is made for me. This is so made for me. <laughs> and tucking trunks. You know she did it. Wait. There ain't no way that the good guys are the white guys. And then they play against the scary black guys who are also now. <laughs> you can't have a Daily Wire production without it being white supremacist, dog. Yo. Yo, that's sick. That's fire. God, they make so much. Uh, they, dude, I love conservatives should always let their freak flag fly. You know? <laughs> that's the biggest I've ever seen on a lady. I don't care. Lady ballers. One can even be trans age now, which provides Sheelix with a wonderful opportunity to relive all the experiences that she missed out on in school. <laughs> Streaming exclusively on Daily Wire Plus, December 1st. That's awesome. That's awesome. White Chicks, Better Plot Plus, Better Movie. Dude, this is... No, this is it. This is the best. <sighs> wow. This was the movie they tried to film in Nashville that a bunch of actors walked out of. Wait, is that why all the Daily Wire cast is in it now? Because all the actors walked out. Um, I can't wait to review this. This is this is peak cinema. This is peak cinema. It's the best. Starring Jake Crane, Blaine Crane. What the fuck? Who are these people? Are they brothers? Co-host your favorite sports show. David Adam Crone, co-host of Crane Company. Ty the Fish, new comedy special on YouTube. Billy Ray Brandt, hated by feminists, admired by... The Feminine, Voted Biggest Pick Me, Matt Walsh Blog, also featuring Riley Gaines, like, <laughs> fuck, Ted Cruz, Seth Dillon. Seth Dillon's going to have a piece where he talks about how it's totally, it's, it's <laughs> like rape children are, are uh, better than having a 14-year-old rape victim be, a uh, 14-year-old uh, rape victim get an abortion in the movie. That's his part. Uh, Andrew Clavan. Michael J. Noles, I'm Brett Cooper, and Ben Shabibo from when it was being filmed. What? Acting like trans women at Olympic-style basketball tournament had people in the audience holding trans pride posters of and names of the teams such as Lady Ballers. I'm non-binary, so I immediately left when I realized. But I can't believe something so vile is being made in my hometown at a venue I frequently attend shows at. Took four, took out four days of work because the money was good and paid in cash each day. I felt so unsafe before our production even started that my wife had to come get me. I don't get... I, I say get the money up. You know what I mean? Get the money up, not the funny up. Take their fucking... Take those pieces of shit uh, and, and their dollars. What is this? One of their stars that cringed the thing about Palestine? Yeah, hi. This is just a little message to all these cis, straight, white... Can I just say something? A lot of these dudes are like low-key but high-key just in the cross-dressing. That's it. Like they love, they love doing this because, like, I mean, they're they're just like very into it. They love doing this because they're very into it. They they want to act like they just hate it or that they're making fun of it, but it's like, no, man, you're just doing it. You're doing it because you like it, and it, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just like you should probably be more comfortable. Netflix in America right now, like, here's an idea. Shut up, dead ass. Shut your little privilege traps. Your little Karen voices. Your little Chad voices. Like, you have no right. You have no right chiming in on what's happening right now. Okay, maybe talk to somebody oppressed. I don't know, like the LGBTQIA2 plus community for Palestine. Maybe talk to them because they know what's up. Because Palestine would welcome those folks with open arms, babe. Bro, this is literally identical to. <laughs> 
This is literally Israel's greatest uh, SNL sketch, by the way. A testament to how bad Israeli comedy is. Oh, my God. Like, Israeli comedy is basically this fucking random asshat in his YouTube channel. Yeah, I think the greatest L anyone's ever taken is Steven Crowder because he would love to be this. He would love the cross dress in this in this production. It, they would well, well. I actually I don't know if you're allowed to be gay in Palestine. Let me just fact check that. Gay marriage is not recognized in Palestine. You might be uh, arrested or even murdered for being get gay. So that wouldn't. We listen to the black people, okay? The blacks know it's up, okay? So let's just check the BLM Twitter right now. Yes, that is all it is with a cute little picture of a paratrooper flying down for freedom. I stand with pals. I love that these guys have, like, made their entire worldview around, like, uh, are you offended because I used the F slur? Uh, okay, Karen. And then they literally are, like, foaming out of the mouth. They're having an aneurysm because of a fucking random unaffiliated BLM Chicago account was like, uh, I stand with Palestine and then like pose with the fucking paratrooper uh, emoji. It's like, you can't live in this world, dude. What are we doing? You're fucking literally crying about this. Also, conservatives are homophobic. Like, what are we doing? You did an entire production making, you're making fun of gay people. You did an entire movie about making fun of, you know, queer people in general. What do you mean? Are you, like, I don't understand it. Like, oh, ha when Hamas does it, it's bad. When I do it, it's good. Like, is that what it is? Stein, das it. Wait, that might actually be the person. The paratrooper is the one who flew down and killed the Jews during the music festival. So you, uh, okay, so if you're, if you're black, you can, say things about killing Jews, but if you're brown, you can kill the, you can kill gays, but not the black. This yeah, I love, I love the, the sentence construction here, by the way. Let's see what the blacks are uh, saying. Arrested or even murdered for being get gay. So that I want to run that part back. Listen to the black people, okay? The blacks know what's up, okay? So let's just check the BLM Twitter right now. <laughs> the blacks know what's up. Let's just check the BLM Twitter no, yes. right now. Oh, God. I love, God, I love right-wing humor. But, like, not for the reasons that, you know, one would appreciate that kind of comedy. Um. Oh, here, Lil Hey, everybody. Joe so if you've been on, like, left-leaning segments of the internet for any time at all, you know that one, like, weirdly recurrent theme, something that comes up again and again, is, like, liberals and leftists trying to explain why conservatives aren't funny and why conservatives make bad art. It's a thing that comes up like a weird amount and usually there are like two very similar theories as to why conservatives make this bad art and tell these unfunny jokes. The first is that conservatives punch down. Whereas lefties are kind and compassionate and therefore make art from that perspective, conservatives are rude little guys, they're rude dudes, and they look down on minorities, and so their comedy comes from a place True. of ugliness. The second kind reason, of. and this is very, very similar, is that conservatives lack empathy. They can't feel for the plight of others. They lack some sort of vision of oppression. And for that reason, art. they're stuck making bad, unfunny hack art. Now I'm going to make a bold statement here and say that I disagree with both of these theories. While I do think that capital C conservative art is quite a lot worse than most other kinds of art, I don't think that punching down or lack of empathy are the reasons for that. And let me tell you my own personal theory for why conservatives make bad art. It's because conservatives are dumb. It's because they're dumb. It's because they're dumb guys. If you're watching a comic <laughs> and the comic says a dumb thing, you're way more likely to not find that comedian funny, you know, because they're stupid. If you're making conservative art and that art exists to justify conservative ideology, the reason why that art is most of the time not going to be very good is that conservative ideology uh, is dumb. Anything that justifies it is going to be stupid because the thing itself is stupid. As I'm editing this video, I'm imagining that I'm going to get one comment. Um, yes, Big Joel, I agree with you that conservative stupid and that that's probably why their art's not very good. But the reason they're stupid is because they're always punching down and hate minorities. And I would say yes and because that's not the only reason they're stupid. Most conservative beliefs are stupid. 
You know, if a comedian comes out there and talks about how climate change doesn't exist, that's not punching down. That's just a dumb guy doing stupid stuff. In any case, I prefer an explanation concerning the stupidity of conservative beliefs um, because this whole empathy punching down thing uh, just seems like a way of asserting like a liberal. The thing is, like, there is a inherent reactionary attitude that's baked into neoliberalism or like the liberal monoculture that we exist under as well. So oftentimes you can at least like point to the hypocrisy of liberalism and and therefore even if you are a conservative you can sometimes come across like as intelligent because you're at the very least making like what is uh, uh ostensibly a, an intelligent fucking uh uh argument about how hypocritical liberalism is but even in that circumstance that's not conservative humor at the uh, it's it's basically the same type of humor that you would hear some, from someone like myself you know what i mean when i'm fucking getting mad at, at people being incredibly hyper narcissistic about their rad lib takes conscience superior to take on matt rife i have not watched a single piece of matt rife content except for like the one time that he was popping off on like a black woman i think and that's it that's the only thing i saw and my takeaway from that was my takeaway from that was that he's hot. Like, he has, like, a weird fucked up face, but in, like, a hot way. Like, his, his face is, like, really fucked up and gross, but in a weird way, it's, like, very hot. I don't know how to describe it. But having said that, I do think that I don't... I do think that because he looks too much like handsome Squidward and, like, ladies loved him or whatever, uh, he... He kind of tried to shed that audience and, like, get with the boys. And now, and now his, I mean, he never really had, like, good humor anyway. People were just, like, kind of laughing because he's hot. Does that make sense? So now that, like, the people that find him hot don't find him funny or want to listen to what he has to say because he's, like, shitting on them, he's lost it all. He scared the hoes. He fucking sucks. Yeah, except except the thing is, like, my my hot take is that, like, I don't think you should cancel a comedian for, for being, like, misogynistic because, I, you know, I'm going to fucking, I'm a man. Obviously, I have toxic masculine uh, aspects to my existence, and sometimes I say shit that's, like, misogynistic. I think you should cancel a comedian for not being funny. And I think his misogyny comes from being a hack more so like it's a it's a desperate attempt to try and make a joke and then failing to be funny which is the worst thing you can do as a comedian and anyone and let me tell you something no matter how neurodivergent some of you motherfuckers might be in here there's still the concept of your problematic fave why do you have a problematic fave because their output is consistent and good regardless of the fucking politics that you don't agree with. So don't come for me and be like, Hassan, oh my God, uh, this guy's being misogynistic. No, you hate him because he's not funny. That's it. He's not funny and he's being misogynistic in an unfunny way. If he was actually funny, we would be having a different conversation. Dave Chappelle is another example of this. Okay, that's it. If you're going to be problematic, if you're going to make like jokes about issues, you're going to make jokes about issues that are like maybe on the on the edge there. You you have to be funny. You just have to. He's the opposite of Shane Gillis. Yeah, I mean even Shane Gillis's like stand-up special was all right. Like there were really good ones. I feel like a lot of stand-up specials like because Netflix is just seemingly giving everybody money. Um there's a lot of stand-up specials out there that I would not consider to be like wall-to-wall -wall, uh laughter inducing. And uh, like Shane Gillis has some really good jokes and then some really mid ones where it's like just straight fucking toilet humor, really hitting the fucking, you know, men versus women in a relationship type shit. And it's very interesting because like, I mean, I don't know, comedy is very subjective. So it's hard to just look at that and, and agree with me. Uh, maybe you're going to say, oh, you're in the wrong here. I thought Shane was like really funny because he has incredibly funny bits. Like he has incredibly funny 
He has really solid jokes. And then sometimes he has like really like mid tier jokes. Matt Reif, on the other hand, doesn't touch the most mid Shane Gillis joke. He is just, as far as I've seen, not very funny at all. Matt Reif's crowd work is genuinely quick and witty, but his normal act is very typical cancel culture stuff. I mean, his crowd work is witty and quick because that's what pops off on TikTok. But you can't make an actual stand-up special with that. He say something like that. He's body shaming me. Cancel Matt Reif. Bitch, you can't cancel me. I'm not your gym membership. Get the fuck off my feet there. You can talk your shit to me online as much as you want. Say whatever mean, hurtful things you want to say to try to hurt my feelings. But just know, I'm going to fuck you up verbally. <laughs> I'm... My goal is to now make you cry. Like, I'm going to win this battle every time. So when I hit you harder than you hit me first, don't act like you're the fucking victim, okay? That's my biggest pet peeve on the entire internet. And probably, probably... Dude, what the fuck? He's doing the thing. He's doing the thing. Oh, God. It's not liberalism that kills comedy, okay? It's a, it's a desperate attempt at trying to get this, okay? If this is what you're doing, if this is what you're looking for, you're not a fucking comic, dude. Like, I would never say I'm a comedian, okay? Because I'm not. I'm not. I think you have to be uh, witty. You have to be clever. You have to be funny. I'm none of those things, okay? I get a lot of this, though. I get a lot of this, and I get a lot of booze, obviously. But I'm not a fucking comedian. Like, I don't have a stand-up special. This guy, on the other hand, is, like, claiming to be a, uh, a, a comedian, and he's, he's doing a TED Talk. Don't do it. Don't do it then. Don't do it. Do a TED Talk instead. Do a, do a podcast and, and uh, complain about cancel culture on the podcast. I hate that. Compare him to Nick Mullen. Like, Nick Mullen is a great example of an old-school comedian person who will, uh, st who, who has, like, really fucking good jokes. Really good jokes. And then, because, and this is the same goes for Shane Gillis, too. Like, and then, some of the stuff that he attempts uh, to, to uh, create laughter out of are just, it, it doesn't hit. And if it doesn't hit, then it comes across very bigoted and awful. Okay. But because he is, because he has a lot of really fucking solid jokes, really solid jokes, that ultimately, like, yeah, he is a good comedian. Every, not every one of your fucking, not every one of your jokes is going to hit. A lot of people don't understand that. Shout outs for giving Nick kudos for once. Wait, what? I don't know if you know this, but it's an ongoing bit. Like, what do you mean? I literally use Nick's fucking cop joke all the time on stream. Like, I pull it up myself personally about who you're going to call when you're, uh, oh, yeah, you hate cops. What's going to happen? I'm going to butcher it, but the, the classic, I honestly didn't know Matt was conservative. So you don't like Matt Reif? I don't know enough about Matt Reif. I just heard his comedy special is mid, and this seems very mid. Probably the best example of that was throughout this Twitter interaction when all this backpack shit was going on. I'm, you know, I'm arguing with people. We're going roast for roast. Just really having some fun, wasting time. And I was having fun with it. And then there was this one woman who took it too far. She would not shut the fuck up, dude. His crowd work is funny. That's it, though. Because there was failed to recognize that Tommy's the most important element of comedy. Yes. What do you mean, dog? You're a Twitch streamer. You're always selling yourself short. You're witty and funny. Just this top of the hour ad break is a quick and witty three minute early. Fucking Christ. Man, you gotta say if you start a joke with arguing with someone on Twitter, is already gonna be bad. Yeah. I I don't know. I, I just like cancel culture is so fucking insanely played out. It's so it's so overdone. Come on. It was hacky in like 2018, brother. How are you still running that shit? How are you still running that shit? What is this Nick Mullen joke? I like Elon. That's my that's, that's my contrarian take. <laughs> I think he's gonna save the world. I thought he was a fight. I thought he was whack for a long time <laughs> until the last couple weeks. Because now he's like he's gonna be the hero we need. Because he's gonna do two birds one stone. He's gonna destroy the website Twitter and all of his unearned personal wealth in the same move. <laughs> 
and be the hero we kind of need in retrospect. He's like, he, that's, that would be like if the third plane in 9-11 made it to Congress. It would be like that. That would be that's that good. move. Where first you'd be like, this is pretty bad. And then be like, well, maybe. Maybe it's pretty good. No, I'm just kidding. No way you're laughing at this. Wait, really? That that's that's funny. Um. Anyway, that's a uh, look. Whatever. I feel like I never rate whatever uh, the least funny chat on Twitch thinks is funny. Yeah, no, I I I know. I know that this chat finds me to be funny, which is sad for me because they find very little else to be funny. It, it's really dumb. It's dumb. It's dumb to fucking constantly be obsessed with like what comedians are saying. And, and, and acting like, uh, comedians are, are the beating heart of American culture or some shit. Like they're supposed to be like honest truth others. Like, eh. yeah, most of the people, most of the people that complain about that sort of shit also don't fully understand how, like what it takes to build a set, uh, what it takes to be funny. And they don't recognize that what happens when you're not actually funny doesn't necessarily mean that you're like a bad person. You know what I mean? 